Hello everybody, welcome to the shop. On the operating table today, we've got the governor operated gas valve to my superior type CA oil field engine that I just picked up. If you haven't seen it, make sure to uh, look a video or two back and uh, you'll see me hauling it and unloading it off my trailer with a northwest crane. Anyway, there are a couple of things I wanted to just kind of go through this engine. It was a running engine maybe about four years ago or so. But I just wanted to make sure a couple certain things were squared away so when I ran it I knew I wouldn't have to worry about it. I wanted to make sure everything was free and moving the way it should be and free of rust. Uh, if a chunk of rust gets in the valve it it'll, might hold the valve open or whatever and just cause issues with it running. And there are also a bunch of pipe fittings and stuff on the, uh, on the gas inlet. This is a one inch gas inlet. Now, one of the things I definitely wanted to take off was was this is a, a swing check. There's really no use or uh, need for a swing check uh, at all as far as I'm concerned. The gas is going to go in. Uh, if you're worried about back pressure or whatever, uh, well, you know, it, it's it's not going to happen. The, the intake valve of the engine basically acts as a check valve. If there's any back pressure, it closes that whether it's a reed valve or a poppet valve is going to close that and prevent anything from going back in here. So I took this out and also uh, I feel um, that you know, you're working off 11 inches of water column. That's roughly one third of a PSI and it it takes a, you know, a certain amount of force to open that swing check. Not very much but if it's only a third of a, a PSI that might make a difference on how it runs. Uh, I'm just going to run a straight pipe with the diamond valve and uh, and then and then that'll be that'll be that will be nice and clean out a whole hodgepodge of fittings. So anyway I want to show you how this this uh, valve works. It's interesting and it's also pretty simple. So anyway down here on the stem of the valve are these two nuts. There's a upper lock nut and this bottom nut that goes like so and the the yoke or the fingers of the governor slide right where my fingers are and push this this valve stem up and down. This is the gas inlet, a one inch NPT gas inlet. These are just uh, mounting holes. Up top is nothing, that's just where a plug goes. Uh, interesting to note, this has anti-seize on it, so somebody has been in here fairly recently. I did not put that anti-seize there. Anyway, just because this is a casting, it had to be machined this way, therefore you have to have a hole, so this plug just fills up the hole. And this uh, passageway here and this flange mounts up to the intake of the engine, as you can see there. And you can see the gas valve itself right here. I'll slide it out so you can see it. And that's all it is. It's uh, kind of like a diamond valve in a way. There's, uh, as you can see, two valve uh, discs or whatever you want to call it. And they're angled. And then down in the housing, you can see uh, just past the threaded hole, there's one smooth round hole. And then beyond that, there's an identical size smooth round hole. The gas valve uh, slides and fits perfectly right in there. So here's a look in through the gas port. Here's the bottom hole that we are looking at. And you can see that brass or bronze gas valve fits right in there perfectly. There's a little bit of wiggle room, but it doesn't that doesn't really matter. And now there's two passageways. Like I said, the, again, the gas comes in here. And then the gas with the valve open, the gas can travel up through a passageway here and also down through a passageway here and end up in the uh, into the intake. And you can see as if I align the angle just so it'll slowly meter the gas as this stem rises up. I'm pushing it up and this is the direction the governor would push it if it called for more fuel. 
So an idle position would be just like that, where just that little opening right there allows gas in, and then you can open up further. And that's really all there is to it. I, I I didn't really fix anything. I just took this part, cleaned it. There was some rust and dust and everything, which you know it'll it'll if it gets sucked in, it might cause the intake valve reed valve to kind of sit off center and leak a little bit or whatever. It might score this bronze valve eventually. So I just took it apart, cleaned it, everything's smooth, is nice and smooth the way it should be, and it's ready to go back on the engine. And the one last thing I'm going to mention, since I have it apart, is here's the diamond valve that came with the engine. And uh, this is just something for you guys to keep in mind if you're buying a diamond valve for an engine of yours. I mean, this this is the body, of course, and has the the graduated face you know, half quarter eighth open. And here's the handle. This is all original as far as I can tell. The pointer and everything. But look at that. That's not a diamond valve. That's just a that's just a plug valve. And it's possible that this was swapped at some point. I don't I don't know. I don't think so. So just because you get a valve that looks like this doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a diamond valve, unfortunately. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because this valve, the governor valve, does most of the metering. You can do coarse metering with this just fine when you're kind of weaning the engine into fuel just uh, for starting purposes. But once, once the engine's running, you can pretty much just keep that open, or at least most of the way open, and allow the governor valve to do most of the work. If you're running an older oil field engine like my Patton Brothers, where you really need to finally control the gas supply, you know, in other words, this diamond valve is your one and only throttle, you probably want a real diamond valve. So that's it everybody, one little step on the Superior. I, uh, I don't want to speak too soon, but I, maybe I'll have this thing running before, before New Year's. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the next video.